Hey guys, welcome to episode 3 of Geography 101. Today we're going to be doing submergent landforms and how they form. So yeah, let's get started. So sometimes mean global temperatures increase. This could be at the end of a glacial, such as um, during the Flandrian transition. So air temperatures and surface sea surface temperatures increase. Now this results in a sea level increase. The volume of water gets bigger because water expands when it gets warmer, um, taking up more space. So volume increases and the sea level rises. Also, um, water stored on land and in ice caps, glaciers and ice sheets, um, this melts, which results in the volume of water in the sea increasing in the oceans and seas increasing this global rise in temperatures and global rise in sea levels is called eustatic sea level rise so that's when globally volume of water in the oceans increases there's also isostatic sea level rise which is localized um, and this is as a result of um, areas of land kind of sinking for whatever reason but we won't go into that today okay so one submergent landform is a ria which is a submerged river valley um and it's basically a type of estuary um so we've got this badly drawn river valley here before it's been submerged um so I didn't draw enough tributaries, but I add some later on, which is a bit confusing. Uh, so we've got the sea there. We've got the mountainous upper course there. We've got the middle course there. And the valley is kind of surrounded by hills and stuff. So the sea level rises. The sea floods the valley, um, leaving just kind of um, the sides of like the mountains kind of poking out. Um, the upper course doesn't get flooded. This is still kind of pouring into the estuary because, uh, you know, it's too mountainous and it goes uphill. Um, but the lower course is now a uh, nice salt, salt water estuary. Um, and um, yeah. Um, so that's just a kind of that, there's your rear there. Um, I didn't draw enough tributaries earlier, so I think I just, I'm just realizing that and adding them on here. Uh, sorry, they don't they don't appear. It's just pretend that they were there all along. Um, these tributaries kind of also get flooded and stuff if they're in the lower course. So there you have your rear. Now we're going to look at the long form of it. So A is just at sea. B is right in the upper course, right at the source of the river, and A is at the mouth of the river. Um, or rather in the estuary. Um, so as you can see, A in the sea, B nice and high up in the mountains. Uh, so generally it's quite a uniform depth all along. Um, that's what I've written along the bottom um, with kind of waterfalls and stuff nearer to B. So next we're gonna look at the cross section. Um, so we're gonna have a um, nice kind of gently sloping valley sides because it's a v-shaped valley um and we've got the little dent in the middle is the previous river channel i'd like to think of it like that but the deposition in the early stages of the rear formation means that this kind of isn't really present and plus you're not going to go underwater to look at it um but i like to think of it like that to remind myself that it used to be a river so as the sea level rises the Rivers have less energy for erosion and more deposition will happen because they're going slower. Um, and so you'll get a lot of sediment deposits infilling the kind of river channel at the bottom. Um, however, because the water is deeper, you'll have um, marine erosion at the kind of high water mark because this is a tidal area. Um, which will mean kind of undercutting along the valley sides, um, like shown here. Subaerial processes um, will occur on the valley sides and so will mass movements. Um, so you might get some kind of stuff 
falling into the river, or rather the estuary, from the valley sides. So an example of a rio is Chichester Harbour. It's basically just an estuary, but it explains how it was formed, rather than what exactly it is. So next, our next submergent landform is a fjord. So I'm going to start off with the cross section here. So fjords are glacial U-shaped valleys and they have very steep cliff-like sides as you can see here. Um, and as they as the sea level rises and they get, sorry I don't know why I drew that deeper, but yeah as the sea level rises and they get um, filled in, um, they are very deep um, just because that's the nature of a glacial valley. Um, yeah, about a thousand meters is, you know, an average thing. So you, again, you get marine erosion and undercutting there. Um, and you get alluvial deposits at the bottom because as sea level rises, um, you get deposition. So next I'm going to draw the bird's eye view or plan form of a fjord. Um, so a fjord is just um, formed from a glacial valley. Um, so before it's submerged, um, the thing that I'm showing here is just kind of like um, the, yeah, you can see the mountains along the side. It's just like the glacial valley there. Um, yeah, it's quite mountainous. Um, so as the sea level rises, the glacial valley is infilled. Um, and this is also impacted a lot by glaciers melting and stuff, making the sea level rise there. So you, you can see, um, next I'm going to draw the long form of it. So we've got A um, at the seaward end of the fjord and B at the in most inland point. Um, so here we've got a shallower part in the, uh, the seaward end called the threshold. And this results from lower rates of erosion at this end of the valley, um, where the ice thinned in warmer conditions. So I think that means that everything was kind of moving and moving away slower. So then there wasn't as much erosion. You can see you can see the plan form of a fjord is pretty straight without any without many meanders or wiggles like the rear. Um, this is because when the glaciers retreated, which wasn't necessarily at the same time as when the sea levels rose this time, um, they eroded any interlocking spurs and kind of meanders um, that may have been present in the valley, um, which resulted in a very straight landform. So there you go, submergent landforms. I hope you enjoyed that video. See you next time.